Hello again, geometry students, and welcome to part two of our lesson on surface area. In part one, we covered the surface area of prisms and pyramids, and in today we're going to be covering the surface area of cylinders, cones, and spheres. Basically, I separated the two lessons that way because today's lesson is all going to be incorporating circles. Cylinders have circular bases, cones have circular bases, spheres are three-dimensional circles, whereas prisms and pyramids in the first lesson were based on polygons, not on circles. So let's take a look at the formula for the surface area of a cylinder. It looks really scary, but it's really not that bad at all. Remember that surface area is just adding up all of the areas of each of the faces. And on a cylinder, there's two circular faces. And the area of a circle is just pi r squared. So that's what the first part of our formula is representing, is the two circular bases. Pi r squared is the area of a circle. There's two circular bases, so 2 pi r squared is just the area of the circular bases. 2 pi r h is the area of the rectangle. If you were to unwrap this, it would actually be a rectangle that wraps around the circular bases. In fact, if you did the nets activity from last week and you happened to do the cylinder net, you would have seen that it's really just a big rectangle with a circle on top and bottom. So how is this crazy 2 pi r h, though, representing the area of a rectangle? Well, if you recall in our first part of this lesson on surface area, for the, air, for the surface area of prisms and the surface area of pyramids, we dealt a lot with finding the perimeter of the base and then multiplying that times the height or times the slant height. And it's actually the same idea here with a cylinder, except the perimeter of a circle is called the circumference. And 2 pi r is the circumference of a circle. So this first part of this second term, 2 pi r, is calculating the circumference or perimeter of the base, and then you multiply that by the height of the cylinder, and that gets you the area of the rectangle that wraps around the whole shape. So adding the two circular bases and the rectangular lateral face that wraps around those circular bases gives you the total surface area. Let's take a look at an example. This is a cylinder, so I will be using the surface area of a cylinder formula. The first thing I need in the surface area of a cylinder formula is the radius. And the radius is clearly labeled for me on my diagram as 40. Then I need the radius again, which is still 40, and then I need the height. And the height is labeled as 22. So this was actually pretty simple because everything was already labeled for us. There was no, you know, Pythagorean theorem or anything to do. So I'm just going to plug those numbers into my formula of 2 pi times 40 squared. That's the area of the two circular bases. Plus 2 pi times 40 times 22. That's the area of the rectangle that wraps around the circular bases. And I would type that into my calculator and get an answer of about 15,582.3 square kilometers. All right, let's try another cylinder. So I'm still going to be using the 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h formula. The first thing I need is the radius, r, but I wasn't given the radius, I was given the diameter. 5 is labeled as a full segment that goes all the way across that circle, so that means that the diameter is 5. But I don't, I don't want the diameter, I want the radius. So I'll cut that diameter in half and figure out that my radius is 2.5 yards. Then I need the height, which is 28. Now, you might be saying, well, wait a second, Ms. Goforth, that can't be the height because it's going horizontally. Please remember that height has nothing to do with up and down and left and right or vertical or horizontal or anything like that at all. Height is simply the segment that connects the bases. No matter what orientation your 3D figure is in, find your two bases. And yeah, I know we can't technically see one of them because it's shown as a solid cylinder. I can't see that dotted curve that would represent the other base, but it's assumed that the other base is over here. And this is my base that I can see. The length that connects those two bases is called the height, and that's labeled as 28. So now that I know R and I know H, I'll plug that information into my surface area formula, type that into the calculator, and get an answer of 479.1 square yards. All right, let's look at the surface area of a cone formula. 
it's pi r squared plus pi r l. Pi r squared is the area of a circle, and we have one circular base on a cone, so that's why the first part of this formula is pi r squared. That calculates the area of the circular base. The other face of this shape is actually a sector. Again, if you did the nets activity from last Thursday and you cut out that cone and saw how it's actually constructed, it's built off of a circle and then a sector. And pi r l is one way to calculate the area of a sector in this situation. And l is the same thing as it was in part one of this lesson, which is to say it's the slant height. The slant height is the distance from the apex along the shape to the base, as opposed to the actual height, h, which is from the apex through the shape perpendicular to the base. So please be sure that you have the right kind of height for this formula. Slant height, as the name implies, should be slanted. And the actual height, which we'll need for volume next week, is the perpendicular distance from the base to the apex. Let's take a look at a couple examples. Since this is a cone, I'll be using the pi r squared plus pi r l formula. So the first thing I need in that formula is r, which is labeled on my diagram as 17. Then I need r again, which is still 17, and then I need l, which is the slant height. And it's shown on my diagram to be 30 feet. I can tell this is the slant height because it's labeled as the slanted portion of my cone that goes from the base along the outer edge of the cone to the apex. So this one was pretty straightforward. It had everything automatically labeled for us. So I can just plug those numbers into my formula, plug those numbers into the calculator, and get an answer of 2510.1 square feet. But let's try an example that's maybe not so straightforward. It's still a cone, so I'm still using the pi r squared plus pi r l formula. And the first thing I need in that formula is the radius. But I wasn't given the radius, I was given the diameter. If the diameter is 16, the radius has to be half of that, so it has to be 8. The next thing I need in my formula is l, which is the slant height. But I wasn't given the slant height, I was given h, which is the actual height. I can tell that that's the actual height, h, not the slant height, l, because the 15 centimeters is perpendicular to the 16 centimeters. In other words, it's the distance from the apex to the base inside of the shape, perpendicular to it. And that's not what I want. I want the slant height. I want from the apex along the outside of the shape to the base. So we're going to have to use, yep, the Pythagorean theorem to figure it out. So there is a right triangle here, since the base and the height are perpendicular, it makes a right triangle. I know that the height is 15, so I'll label that leg as 15. And I know that this triangle only goes halfway across, it really just is the radius here, not the whole diameter. So that's why I'm choosing 8 for my other leg, because that's the length of the radius. And then I can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of L, the slant height. Fill in those numbers into a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and you get an answer of 17. So now I have all the information I need in order to calculate the surface area. I'll plug in r, and I'll plug in L into our formula, and then plug that into the calculator and get an answer of 628.3 square centimeters. The last shape that I want to talk about is spheres. They have a nice simple little formula of 4 pi r squared. Um, it's kind of complicated to explain why that's the formula, you kind of have to use calculus. So just take my word for it, it's 4 pi r squared. So really the only thing that we need in order to calculate the area of a sphere is the length of its radius. So like in this example, I'm going to use 4 pi r squared for my formula because it's a sphere. The radius is labeled as 9. So my formula looks like this, 4 pi times 9 squared. Type that into the calculator, and you get 1017.9 square meters. Easy. And the only way I can make it more complicated is if I give you the diameter instead of the radius. And that, of course, means that you have to cut that diameter in half to get your radius. So I have 4 pi times 12 squared for this one, which is 1809.6 square inches. So spheres, in my opinion, are by far the easiest ones to calculate. 
And that's all you need to know about calculating the surface area of cylinders, spheres, and cones. In the next part of this lesson, we'll move on to calculating the surface area of composite three-dimensional solids.